Now, as we move into the course, trust me, a little bit later on, we're going to spend a lot of time out in that PowerShell environment, writing commands, looking at what happens with commands, and showing you all kind of little tips and tricks. But for now, we've got to go through a little bit of minutia here. We've got to talk about history on PowerShell and some of the other aspects about .NET integration and some other things to make sure that you're up to speed and you understand what's going on with PowerShell when you read in documentation and when you look at certain issues that you will run into. Now keep in mind, PowerShell first appeared to us officially as PowerShell 1.0. Now this was originally called Microsoft's Monad project. This was first introduced as Monad way back in September 2003 at a developers conference. Now, when it finally was released in November 2006, the name was changed to PowerShell. Now, when it was first released, it was intended for use with Windows XP, either Service Pack 2 or Service Pack 3. It was part of Vista, and it was part of Windows Server 2003. Now, this can get just a bit confusing for newcomers to PowerShell, and I'll talk about these issues through the next few videos. But based on the operating system that you have, you automatically have a particular version of PowerShell. Now, PowerShell 2.0 is probably the one that most people have seen. Maybe even all you've done is notice that there's that little blue icon out there, and you've opened it up and said, hey, this is the command environment with a blue background for some reason. And what you're looking at there is PowerShell. We'll look at opening it and working with it a little bit later on in the course. Now, PowerShell 2.0, though, was released in August 2009. And it was released as part of Windows 7. If you're running a Windows 7 machine and you open PowerShell, it's very, very likely that you are looking at PowerShell 2.0. Windows Server 2008 Release 2 also included PowerShell 2.0. And there were major improvements and enhancements over PowerShell 1.0. Some of those enhancements were PowerShell remoting was greatly simplified, and it made executing commands on remote computers much, much easier. We added hundreds of new commandlets, features, just a lot of things because when PowerShell 1 was released and administrators started working with it, they flooded Microsoft with, we need this. It'd be cool if it would do this. Why doesn't it do this? And a lot of this came from experience in other operating systems like Unix and Linux and some of their administrative tools. Now, PowerShell 3.0 was released in 2012 even more features, even more capabilities. One of the big ones is it introduced support for workflows. Now, we're not going to get into workflows in this course, but I can point you to some resources, and what you will learn here will make jumping into workflows much, much easier. The graphical PowerShell tool that we now know as the Integrated Scripting Environment, or ISE, which we will look at and play with a bit later on in the course, was renamed and got a whole new lease on life as a part of PowerShell 3.0, and they improved the tab completion feature, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later on as well. PowerShell 4.0 is now effectively the top version. There is a PowerShell 5, but just hang on, we'll talk about that. PowerShell 4 was released in 2013. Notice, just one year after PowerShell 3 was released, and this gives you an idea of the momentum that's building out there with administrators with PowerShell. Uh, just a year later, you didn't get as many new features, but some really big ones have now started to appear. One is called DSC, Desired State Configuration, was added. Now, this manages the deployment and configuration of Windows services and their settings. Now, this has to do directly with the security of an entire organization. One of the key components of security is commonality of configurations between all your systems. It's very easy for hackers to kind of probe and find a soft spot because we don't have consistent configuration across all of our servers, all of our desktops, and so forth. Desired state configuration takes care of that. I'm going to give you some information on that a little bit later on. Now, DSC can manage files, directories, uh, registry settings, you can stop and start any services or processes. There's commandlets just for DSC for user and group account management. You can discover configuration status, you can restore configurations, you can even deploy new software with DSC. So, this is a big one 
And it's something by the time you get to the end of this course and you feel a lot more comfortable with what you can do with PowerShell, you are going to really want to dig into DSC and play with it just a little bit. Now PowerShell 5.0, this is very soon going to be the latest version. Right now PowerShell 5.0, as I'm doing this particular video, is in preview mode. Now this was released, there was one in April, there was an update in May, and this is part of the Windows Management Framework 5.0. Now do keep in mind, let me point this out here, I didn't want to confuse you too much at the start of this, but PowerShell is always part of the Windows Management Framework. And so PowerShell 2.0 was part of the Windows Management Framework 2. PowerShell 3 was part of Windows Management Framework 3. You see the pattern, right? And so the way you get PowerShell is to download the Windows Management Framework if you want a version different than the one that came pre-installed with your operating system. And we'll talk about that later when we talk about getting and installing PowerShell. Now, a couple of really cool things that are being introduced in PowerShell 5.0 that you definitely need to know about. First is a new commandlet called PowerShell Get. This is a new way to discover, install, and update PowerShell modules. And then there's network switch commandlets, and this is really cool. This gives you the ability to manage network switches that support it, and you're going to see a lot of them support it over the coming months. And we also get something called OneGet. This is a new way to discover and install software packages from around the web. So we're just seeing PowerShell get more and more automated. It's gaining more and more power. Keep in mind, all these versions I've talked about, we will revisit in some form in two or three different places later on in the course. So this little bit of history will help you get acclimated to some of the issues you'll deal with when you're working with PowerShell out there in the real world.